Congressman from California, Ami Berra. He sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee, of course, one of the committees involved in hearing these witnesses here. Congressman, we appreciate you taking the time this morning. Jim, thanks for having me on. So how do Democrats fight the, not just the impression, but the fact that yesterday's vote was completely along party lines? The Republicans are saying this is a partisan impeachment investigation. How do you fight that argument? Yeah, it's disappointing that no Republicans voted for it because what they were asking for is moving these hearings to a public phase and mm -hmm. you have some transparency here and that's exactly what that vote was about. Setting the parameters, moving to a public phase and that's what they wanted. They should have voted for it. Look at the numbers here. There's new ABC News Washington Post poll out that, that has some concerning signs for Democrats, particularly look at the independents. The independents leaning, and again within the margin of error, but at least split against impeachment and removal. And again, look at that split there. 82% Republicans, no. 82% Democrats, less. You know as well as I do that for this to, to, to move forward, and particularly if you're going to go towards okay. removal in the Senate, you've got to convince a large block of non-Democrats, independents and Republicans. You're not doing that yet. Well, having sat in a lot of those depositions and listening to career foreign service officers, career national security folks kind of lay out what they saw, what alarmed them, et cetera. I do think moving this to a public phase and letting the public and the media kind of hear that testimony and hear the witnesses um, will start to shift some of that. I don't think we should jump to the conclusion that this will lead to articles of impeachment. Obviously, it looks like it's heading mm -hmm. in that direction, but we're still in that investigation. Now it's a public investigation. You're saying you've been, and I don't want to violate any uh, confidential testimony that you've seen or heard. Have you heard sufficient evidence today for an article of impeachment against this president for abuse of power? Sure. I think there's plenty of evidence and in the public domain as well that suggests he's committed impeachable offenses. Okay. Let me ask you this, because Tim Morrison, uh, a, a, a President Trump's top Russia and European expert, served in this administration. He testified yesterday, and there's been some back and forth as to whether his testimony helped or hurt your case. The Republicans are saying it helped their case, and I think they're zeroing in on a line from an op his opening statement, after which he said, listen, a lot of stuff I heard wasn't right, politically dangerous, etc., but not illegal. Based on what you heard in there, does he stand up the argument that there was abuse of power or undermine that argument? Well, he corroborated a lot of what we heard previously from Ambassador Taylor, from Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, et cetera, and corroborated that this was a president who was withholding funding in order to um, push Ukraine to do an investigation into political So you're saying he corro corroborated the charge that there was a quid pro quo? Yes. So, and in my mind, that is an abuse of power. Now, do we proceed with articles of impeachment on that? Do, do we move in that direction? You know, we'll see after we do these public hearings. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you on a different topic because you have Elizabeth Warren, one of the leading Democratic presidential candidates, of course, a Democrat like yourself, although you have not endorsed yet, coming out with a proposal to pay for a $20.5 trillion Medicare for All plan here without any taxes on the middle class. You look at that plan, do you think it's a viable plan? Yeah, You're a doctor, a, I should yeah. tell to viewers. As a doctor, we all want America's patients to have coverage and you know, be able to go see a doctor if they get sick. But we've already got this massive deficit, another $22 trillion or so. dollars. Yeah. I'm not sure how you're going to pay for that. And frankly, I don't think you could get 218 votes in the House of Representatives, let alone 60 votes in the Senate. So. Yeah, I would go back to strengthening the Affordable Care Act, building off of hard fight gains that we've made. And, you know, in California, we, we're getting to almost full coverage. And then, you know, there's still ways to get the rest of the people into, into the system. By staking out positions like this, and again, this was a position that was way out there in previous election cycles. Now, two of the leading candidates, Sanders and Warren, are on this, you know, they're on this page, the same page now. Does that risk alienating independent and moderate voters in the 2020 election? Well, I think it's a tough position to defend in a general election because mm -hmm. you're going to have to go into great detail. And again, I don't know how you pay for something like that without mm -hmm. raising taxes. And you know, that's worrisome. Yeah. A trillion there, here a trillion there, eventually you're talking about real money. Although that quote, I think, used to be just a billion. Anyway, right. that's where we are today. Congressman Ami Barra, thanks. For